There is a time and a season for everything, a time appointed under the heavens. And this holds true for music. Right now, in the time that we're living in, we're seeing bands that were mainstays, uh, once mainstays, kind of fade away into the past and they're becoming memories. And we're seeing new bands come to the forefront. And tonight, we have a band that I really believe that God is going to use mightily as they come to the forefront. Their name is Stars Will Fall. And I've got each of them on the screen with me. I've got Jason, I've got Dale, and I've got Austin from Stars Will Fall. Guys, thank you for joining us this evening. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. I was just learning that each of them is an engineer or something to do with technology before we got here. So I got three really smart guys on the show with me tonight. And we're going to talk about how God is using them at this time. And that's really what I want to start off with here, because as I was reading your bio, you made it very clear that when you started this band, what what was it like last year? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 2023, that you saw a need that needed to be filled in the realm of music. What was that need that you were seeing that you guys could fill? Uh, for me, uh, you know, I grew up listening to like DC Talk, Audio Adrenaline, Newsboys, stuff like that. And I just really didn't have that as I as I got older a lot of the bands that I like I, I still like skill out there going strong but there's there's just something missing I feel and uh especially with uh you know the lyrics and God's word really being into the music uh CCM is blowing up right now but Christian rock is is kind of just you know not really doing a whole lot and uh we feel called to uh to you know use our talents in uh in the ways that god uh bestowed upon us basically to uh yeah. not bury that talent but to use it and to make it a ministry first and then music second yeah yeah jason i want to ask you what was it that you were seeing and how do you feel that stars will fall is filling the gap in music right now yeah, so for me, it, it was, um, you know, I I obviously enjoy playing music. I've been in bands over the years, last oh, 25 years or so. Um, and I I wanted to really have some a way that I could reach people in a ministry. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought, well, what better way to do that than with rock music, right? Because there's yeah. so many people love rock music. And it doesn't have to be, you know, gospel type music to reach people. It can be stuff that people listen to uh, normally and and give a good positive message about Jesus at the same time. And Absolutely. so, you know, there, there's some mainstream bands that do, you know, but I just felt that I was called to do that. And that's that's something I wanted to pursue and uh, thought that was the way I could help minister to people as I'm not the best talker to go out and just talk, but I, I felt through music um, that was something I could do uh, well for people. Austin, how about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to echo what these guys are saying. I mean, there's there's a lot of rock music and there's a lot of music in general that's not really, not really I don't want to say saying anything, but I mean, this <laughs> is just not about anything, I guess, important. I mean, this was kind of something that, that just seemed very, very important to get out there and, and play music that we like to play and listen to, but have, you know, a very important message behind it. Very profound. And what I see you guys doing, and we're going to get to one of your songs in just a few moments, is the quality of the rock that you're putting out. It's not like you're a bunch of gospel singers who want to be rock musicians, but you're rock musicians that are presenting the gospel. and what I really enjoy about you is when I look at the three of you, it's like, 
can these guys rock? You know, that's the first question that comes to mind. Can these guys really do it? And then when you listen to the music, it's like, yeah, they do it just as good as the guys that you hear on mainstream radio as, as rock musicians. And those that are just tuning in right now, you're going to want to stick around to listen to some of the song songs that we're going to play from Stars Will Fall. I mean, this is, this is going to blow your mind what they're doing. And that's why I'm so excited to have them on this evening. And how is it, and for each of you, that God prepared you specifically, looking back, how did God prepare you specifically to fill this gap? What things happened in your life? What experiences did you have? Can you share briefly about that? Uh, I guess I'll go first. We'll do a round robin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, uh, I have an older brother, and we we started playing it, we started a band when I was 15. So we were playing in bars and things when I was 15. And uh, I was in a, the last time I was in a band was 12 years ago. I had a big gap, got married, had kids. And uh, someone, someone told me that they saw me, you know, being a, um, you know, evangelist, like really uh spreading the gospel having a stage like telling people about it and i'm like yeah right dude <laughs> like i'm the baby of i'm the my wife works in the church so i'm like in the nursery with the kids you know so i'm like whatever dude but um when this opportunity arose it's just like all the all the signs were there it was like okay i can evangelize and do all this stuff that i had been doing but use it for god's glory Jason? Yeah, so for me, you know, it was probably about, I don't know, six years ago or so, my family and I decided to uh, break away from listening to secular music, and we just, we focused on listening to all Christian music, whether it be rock music or, or pop music or, or rap or whatever it was that, you know, each, each of us liked, and for myself, it was rock, of course, um, so that's all we started listening to. And I was like, man, we just, you know, I should be doing this. Mm -hmm. And that just kind of what led me to do it is that's all I was listening to was Christian music anyways. So I thought what, what better way to, you know, enjoy what I was doing and, and help spread the message at the same time than to just yeah. dive into it. Um, yeah. And oddly enough, I, I uh, met Austin through his cousin uh, who I worked with. And it just kind of, we just started playing together one day and uh, things just kind of happened. And we, we formed a band, that band broke up uh, about two years ago, but um, Austin and I just wanted to keep it going. Uh, and that's what led us to start Stars Will Fall, so. Nice. Austin, how were you prepared for this time? Um, I kind of wasn't prepared, like just kind of, <laughs> it just kind of hit me. Um, I, uh, my wife and I experienced a, a passing of a child and, and that really kind of put into perspective and, and really started leading me down this road of questions. You know, I mean, it's, it, yeah, I was just looking, we were looking for someone to seek solace in or, you know, it's so confusing, such a confusing time that we were also looking for someone to blame. And, and I think, I think that's really the tipping point of, um, of where I started my journey down. Okay. This is, there's something beyond this. There's, you know, there's definitely meaning behind all of this and I'm trying to figure out what it is. So that's where I'm kind of coming from with it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hey, and we've got your band, uh, your label mate, uh, Jermaine from Tricord, who was on with us last week. He says, what's up label mates, Jermaine. Thanks hey, for joining man. the show. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Jermaine has been that. a good friend of ours for a good number of years and he co-hosts Raven's Heart with me every once in a while when we've got something that piques both of our interests and he's a great <laughs> co-host and, and, and a great friend. I want to ask this question about the band name. I find it very fascinating and I think it can go a number of different ways. What does the name Stars That Fall a reference to? so i was reading uh matthew 24 and the 29th verse is uh jesus talking about when he comes back and uh obviously he's quoting the old testament but he says immediately after the tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and stars will fall from heaven and the powers of heaven will be shaken and it's just a reminder to us that jesus is coming back 
and we have yes. work to do. You know, the the harvest is uh, is uh, full, but the the workers are few. So yeah. they are, they yeah. are, they are. I, I'm, it's very interesting that you say that because there are several references in Scripture to the stars falling, and I was thinking it through and pondering it and and contemplating it a little bit just before we came on. And that's exactly where the Lord took me was Matthew 24, 29, before we came on in reference to the stars that fall. And there's something in that that I want to share with you that I thought was very pertinent to what you're doing. It talks about the stars falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And right now, and I'd say since uh, the year 2020, we've been experiencing great shakings through everything in the world, and everything that is not of God is being shaken. And we're seeing that with a lot of stars, especially those that have been the Christian superstars. Some of them have taken us by a lot of surprise, uh, very shocking. They've been shaken, and those stars have fallen. There's a lot of falling stars right now in the shaking that's going on. And <clears throat> What the Lord is showing me for you guys, as I was and I was as I was looking through Scripture at this, I was listening to the song that we're going to play tonight, is that if you keep your focus on Jesus and you keep doing what you're doing and you stay in fellowship with the label that you just came with on with Resurrection Records, God is going to and this is what I mean meant from the beginning of the show tonight that we're seeing many artists, many bands kind of fade into the past and be memories, and we're seeing new ones rise. And I really see you guys as the ones that are going to be rising. You, you're the ones that are going to be coming to the forefront, so long as you keep your heart posture towards Jesus. So really, I believe that your name is prophetic uh, in, in what we're experiencing right now with the shakings of the heavens, and we're seeing, seeing stars fall. But also, you guys will be replacing those stars because Jesus wants to exalt those that have their hearts towards him and are are sharing the gospel in that purity. And that that's what I see with you guys. I, I've got it written right here as proof. Maybe you can read it, Matthew 24, 29, before wow. we came on tonight. Nice. Um, I just, I was like, and that's why I said this could go a number of different ways because you could have been talking about Lucifer falling or you could have been talking about something else, but that's exactly where the Lord uh, took me to. You know, nice. what you guys have done, you're not, you know, you didn't set out in your lives to be rock musicians. That's something that God God called you to. And when God calls you to something, it's never easy. Unless you guys have you know, <laughs> got some sort of secret that I don't know about that we can share with other bands tonight. But um, what was the greatest step of faith that you had to take in getting this project off the ground? Well, for, for me, it was uh, finding finding the members. I, I think that was the hardest thing because, you know, you can find people that want to play rock or, or whatever, but to find somebody that wants to do this for the right reason for Christian rock and the ministry, uh, you tell people, Hey, I'm looking for a singer or something for Christian rock and it's crickets. I mean, it's, it's really hard. I think that was the biggest stumbling thing is just finding the people to do it. Dale, how about for you? Any big steps of faith that you had to take? Yeah, um, all of it. I mean, I had to try out for these guys, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I had I was pretty rusty, you know, twelve years since I was last in a in a band, and um, and it was it was wild because I was talking with my wife about it, and we both decided if this wasn't a ministry first, if it was just for the, just for making music and a creative outlet that it wasn't worth doing. Yeah. Um, so thankfully I have a good godly woman who pushes me over the edge. So <laughs> the leap is kind of, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of, um, known. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Austin? What was the biggest step of faith you had to take in, in starting this project? Yeah, I think for me, um, it was right whenever. So Jason and I came from a band before called Lap Seven Breakthrough, and and the way that kind of fell apart, um, that was that was my test was if I was even willing to go through all the steps that we just taken again with uh, new people, and and that was just kind of a test for me, especially with. Um, 
everything that I had going on. We were building a house. I'd, I've got two very little ones. My wife and I were transitioning into new jobs and I just had to really, really put it beyond my hands and, and just kind of follow what, what felt right, you know, and what I was being called to do. So I think that was the, the biggest push for me. Did any of you have that uncomfortable moment when you walked home and you said to your wives, Hey, we're going to start a rock band. Did they kind of give you that? Did any of you have that? Or was it like, Oh yeah, I really believe that's what God's called you to do. (laughs) Well, my, my particular story, my wife sent me their, their message. I wasn't even on the, uh, in the group. And then I contacted them and she's like, we didn't even talk about it. <laughs> like you already, you already said you were going to go and we didn't even talk about it. So I kind of like <laughs> accidentally joined the band. <laughs> it was a good, it was a good, good accident. accident. <laughs> I, had to, I had to do a lot of making up for that. But uh, uh, <laughs> Let's talk about your most recent release entitled promises. I want to play that. And thank you everybody for joining us. We have with us, Stars will fall up a uh, Christian rock band that is on the rise, and you're really going to like their music. What is this song "Promises" about? I, I guess I'll yeah, take Dale, that. Go for it. <laughs> All right, so um, it is about people who break their promises and how the world is going to give you trouble, and the world is going to give you pain in this life. Uh, is going to be suffering, but there's one who will never break their promises and that who has suffered for you and who has taken all of that guilt and sin and shame off of you. And that's Jesus Christ. That's Jesus. Absolutely. He is the promise keeper. This is Promises by Stars Will Fall.
is the best way that I can describe it is anointed. Wow. <laughs> that that is anointed. Uh, I'm going to bring up some of the comments here because we do have, and I'd like to give a shout out to all of those that listen to the replay, just the audio replay, and especially our listeners in France, in uh, the Netherlands, Germany, and some of the Middle Eastern countries as well. And I want I want to read these so that they can understand the reactions to to this song. And uh, we've got. We got uh, Morning Dove Dave Macin Morning Dove McIntyre saying love the guitar work. Austin with the harmonies, and then we've got Jermaine. His comment is love the song. The drive is so epic. When I listen to this, I hear, and it's not that you're copying. You're you're your own unique band. You're your own unique sound. It reminds me a lot of Stone Sour or Slipknot on a on a good day <laughs> when, <laughs> when they're not angry about something. And I was thinking that through. And it, you're what you're doing is you're addressing a lot of the same issues and in a lot of the same ways that Stone Sour would. And I even hear a little bit of Disturbed in there too. But what you're doing is you're going where they cannot go. They can only go so far. They can only go so far with the issues, but they can't go where you're going because they don't have Jesus. Yeah. So what you're doing is you're giving the answer to the question or you're giving the solution to the problems that are presented by all these other bands that can only go so far with it. What really grieves me is that when you see these other bands, they think they find the solution, but it's in the occult or it's in witchcraft or it's in Satanism. And I've watched the evolution of several bands where you start to see them getting close to the answer to the question. And then all of a sudden they take that hard right or hard left turn towards, towards the occult and towards witchcraft. But you have the answer. And this, this is anointed. I mean, that is quality music, quality Thank music. You. Thank you. Jason mixed it all himself, mixed and mastered. Wow. Yeah. All yeah, I saw it. yeah. Yeah. We do it all ourselves, but we record it here and I mix and master it all. And these guys play a big part in that too, because I'll, I'll go through and throw the mix up and share it to them. And they give me feedback on, Hey, I, I think, you know, we need more drums or uh, the harmonies or need, you know, lowered or, or whatever. And, and then I'll, I'll come back with another, rendition and say all right how about this how's this sound now you know and, um, yeah so so yeah yeah and, and jermaine's even commenting on the harmonies those harmonies in that are tight and they're mixed perfectly and he also says it reminds him of 12 stones and audio slave um it's good company a little bit. yeah but it, it's good company but i don't want to do that to compare you to somebody because you're your own unique god called you for your own unique purpose and you are who you are and what's coming out of you is what God put in you. And it just takes you to that whole level. And it's enjoyable to listen to that. That's the thing is I can follow the song. It's, 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 it, it, you can follow it. It's going somewhere and it takes it to the resolution as well. And I love how you address the, the issue of broken promises. And I just want to interject this, how important promises are and, and in keeping promises. And Jesus is the one, he keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. And it just reminded me, I was studying a few, about a month ago, how when David became king of Israel, one of the things that he did at the outset of his, uh, his reign over Israel is he kept his promise to the house of Jonathan by showing favor favor to Mephibosheth. That's, uh, some of these names are really hard to pronounce. It was Jonathan's son. And I thought about that. I was like, how important that is because Jesus's throne is built upon the throne of David. David's throne is the uh, basically the establishment of the, of the throne of Jesus, who's to come back and to rule and reign. And how appropriate it is that that throne was established on promises that were kept. We're, we're human beings. We don't keep promises very well, but I thought that was very, very important. It's so important to realize that Jesus does keep his promises, even though it seems like it might be taking a while. <laughs> yeah. His, uh, the, the heavenly time zone is different than the earthly time zone. It's like the difference between um, central time, uh, eastern time, and Pacific time uh, here, here, here on earth for, for yeah, 
somewhat of a comparison to it. You know, in addition to the broken promises that you address in this song, you also deal with other difficult issues such as anxiety and also the difficulty of walking the road or the path of righteousness. Why is it important to you guys to address these issues through music, especially through rock and roll and from a Christian perspective? I know for me, you know, anxiety is a big one. You know, our first song out addressed that. And um, I know a lot of the younger generation, you know, in the teens, especially, you know, they're, they're, they've got a lot of anxiety and pressure, uh, peer pressure and things like that, that they're dealing with on a daily basis. And I think it's a great topic to, to touch on um, and not only for them, but for everybody. I mean, everybody throughout their lives has, problems with anxiety or, or maybe bouts of depression or, or something like that. And I, I think the touch on that topic, um, you know, really reaches people. And, uh, I, you know, we want them to know that they're not alone. Um, and, you know, Jesus is there for you. Um, you know, we have the same problems as you and Jesus can help. Wow. Wow. Want to dive a little bit deeper and get a little bit more on the controversial side. Um, to um, kind of ponder some things and th think about things. We, we need to think deep on some of these things. There's a, there's a lot that would say, well, you know, if somebody just goes to church and they sit under the preaching of the word, or if they go to biblical counseling or they read the word or they pray, all of these, all of these issues should go away. Um, we need the preaching of the word. There's just the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word, and, you know, maybe counseling. But music is actually an equation in a healing process or, or, or the healing process. And I firmly believe that. How would you say that your music accompanies the teaching and the preaching of the word and even biblical counseling to help people through these difficulties of life? How does your music help this? And what does your music do that maybe preaching or teaching at the outset can't do at the beginning? I think part of it is being able to reach the people that aren't going to go into a church, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, being able to reach them on a level, you know, that if they hear it, maybe it's going to spark something in them that, you know, they want to learn more about it. Um, but a lot of these people that, you know, we're trying to reach, they'll never step foot in a church, you know. So we have mm -hmm. to go out to them. And, and I think our music is that outreach to them to, yeah. to get them interested and want yeah. to learn more. You're absolutely right. Most people will, won't set foot in a church. Most, most people that are walking the face of this earth won't set in a foot in a church. And even when the church goes out, I really believe that we have to speak the language. And I, music is a language. It's a universal language. But there's many different genres of music. And the genre that you play or that God releases through you is releasing or is reaching or resonating with a particular group of people. And one of the things that I've discovered, and maybe you've discovered this as well, and if you're watching this evening, you can weigh in on this as well, that a lot of people who are dealing with anxiety, who are dealing with the rough issues of life, they're drawn to, or you will find them in the hard rock and the metal communities. Would you guys agree? Have you noticed that? And has anybody that's been watching or listening? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think somebody who's dealing with depression or anxiety or any of these heart issues or are driven or find themselves attracted to harder rock or metal than, let's say, pop music or jazz or something like that? Just, just your opinions. I think, I think there's a lot of emotion in rock music and metal music. Um, I, I think it's the, more, it's the most diverse in my opinion, of, of music genres and the fact that you can have uh, a band like Slipknot, you mentioned earlier, they have a song where it literally is, you know, 666 six, six in the name, and then the next song could be Sulphur, a, a ballad about losing a friend. You know, yeah. it's just so diverse, and I think, I think that's what speaks to a lot of people is the fact that it is so diverse and that it's, it's touching on a lot of issues and a lot of different emotions for people. And I think that's honestly what probably drew us to the same type of music and wanting to play that music is because it reached us at some point. So it can reach someone else and to, to, um, 
you know, push that, push that word through the music. I think that's, yeah. that's, that's the most important part about it. So. That, that's very well said. And we also have some, uh, morning dove says metal addresses that were all broken. That's true. I, yep. I, I would agree with that. It addresses those messy issues that we don't want to necessarily deal with. Um, I think it helps with our emotional, I'm going to use a word that a lot of people are not familiar with, but emotional intelligence, understanding who we are and where we're at and what we're going through. Trey Tate says 100% helps to release emotions that other genres just can't. You know, as much as Kenny G sounds good, <laughs> on a good stereo system. It just doesn't give me what I need to get through those difficult issues in life, you know? And Carly Rae Jepsen uh, just, just doesn't do it for that. That's a whole different thing. Maine says it really does. He agrees with Trey and Morning Dove and says 100% helps to release emotions that other genres just don't. And I think this is where a lot of people need to really learn how to listen to music and, and what's going on because especially Christians and church people, because all of these dark emotions and dark issues are addressed in heavier and harder music. And a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, it leads to that. You know, if you listen to that, that that's what it's leading to. No, the person who's listening to that, it's not leading to the depression in their life. It's they're connecting with it. They're, they're understanding it. And that's why it's so important what right. you're doing it's so important what you're doing because you're giving the answer because at the beginning it's, you know, in your music, I can connect. It's like, yeah, I felt that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I get that. And then you give the answer that the answer is Jesus. How has music helped each of you in your lives? Thank you. Morning Dove. hundred percent. Yes. Thank you. Um, how has music helped you through those difficult things in life? Well, it's, it's like you said, you know, there's a, a lot of darkness in the world and I've always resonated with, um, with rock because I, you know, I grew up in Akron, the streets of Akron, which is not a suburb, you know, it's not a nice place to, to grow up and, uh, and just have seen a lot of, you know, a lot of shady stuff in my just growing up as a, as a young boy, you know, walking to school every day. And it's like, uh, you know, I can't sing about how crippling anxiety is to a piano, you know, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta have a guitar behind that, you know, and, and scream yeah. it out a little bit. And, uh, yeah. for me, it's, it's therapeutic and it's, it's really, um, it's really balanced me. Yeah. Jason, how about for you? How yeah, you? I, I think, you know, it resonates with you. You know, you're, you're getting into this music and, and, you know, you have all these emotions built up inside that you don't really know what to do with. And, you know, you're listening to the lyrics and everything to try and to, to understand. And then, you know, you, you kind of feel it. And for example, like one of the songs, you know, Dale, puts you know it kind of builds up and builds up and then he just releases that scream and that yeah. like like you're doing in your head like you want to do like i've got yeah. this I, right and it just resonates with you um doing that and a lot of uh, metal and rock you know like that um I, I think it brings people closer like that because it's the feeling that they have inside built up um, yes. and then I, I think what we're trying to do is we're showing that same thing, but we're trying to tell you, like you said, uh, what the answer is, is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. I'm all, curious. It's not all screaming. It's, but it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very cleverly placed. I think yeah. it is. It's, it's strategically placed. You're not just screaming for the sake of screaming because you can, and, and you can scream yeah. very well. I mean, that is no question about Thank that. You. That is, that is what I call some quality scream. And that's the difference. You're not just up there or out there just trying to scream for the sake of screaming. Um, you're um, you're doing it for a purpose. Uh, Morning Dev says, best TED Talk ever said metal scream so I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's profound. Thank you. <laughs> and then Trey says, hard to keep emotions in when you've screamed about them for a few minutes. 
<laughs> you know, for me, when I when I really started to get back into metal and, and rock, for me, I was going through a very dark time in my life and there were some a lot of personal issues going on. And for me, it's like, oh wow, I'm not the only one that goes through these things. And yeah. there may be there's there's possibly some hope at at the end of all of this. But really for me, and what it did too is it helped with the emotional intelligence. Because here's something that I've noticed, and maybe those that are watching or listening have noticed this as well and experienced this. If you spend a lot of time in the church world, separated from the world, you really kind of lose touch with reality. Um, you really kind of lose touch with how bad it is in the world and what people are going through. You're you're, you're isolated in a lot of ways. And that's why it's so important for us to go out and to share the gospel. And I think a lot of times in that isolation of this is our world and we've, we've cloistered ourselves in, we lose touch with human emotion. We lose touch with our own emotion and really what is going on in the world and what people are going through. Um, like you were saying, living in Akron, you know, a lot of people can't even imagine what that's like, or people that are living in uh, third world countries, uh, they can't even imagine what that's like, or people that are living in countries that are just, just contaminated with demonic worship and people that are bound by demons through witchcraft or voodoo or things like that. We, we kind of lose touch with that. And I think when we listen to music, like what you're, what you do and, music that is that addresses the issues of life it really kind of gives us a little bit more of a perspective of the world around us agree or disagree yeah i agree for sure yeah absolutely yeah 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 and um you know you guys um you haven't uh you, you guys started what in 2023 just about a year ago Yep. Yeah, I, yeah we're, I, I, we're still new. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you've been around since uh, 2013. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely, definitely a seasoned sound that's there. And uh, God's been opening up a lot of doors for you as a relatively new band. Can you share with us some of those doors that have been opened for you? Well, we recently uh, signed with Resurrection Records, so that was a big step for us, um, opening up lots of doors, new new people and opening us to a whole new family of, of like-minded people and artists uh, that are all for the same common goal of spreading the word of Jesus Christ uh, to people through music. And it's just opened up a big door for us, I think. And, um, you know, we, we've got a couple shows this year, um, services as we like to call them. Um, we've got one in what, July 20th, Austin. Is that correct? I, I think well, that's what it something is. like that. And then uh, we also are playing the Broken Bottle Fest uh, in on nice. September 27th as well, uh, right here in Ohio. Um, so uh, we're hoping to get a lot more um, booked this year, but uh, whatever God can provide and we're willing to share at those events, um, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That is exciting that you've, you've just started out on this new adventure as stars will fall. And God's opened up these doors and he's brought you into fellowship with and and partnership with Resurrection Records and bands like Tricord with Jermaine yeah. and uh, the doors that are opening with that. And I really believe so long as you guys stay, stay with the heart posture towards Jesus and continue to do what you're doing the way that you're doing it, there's, you're going to see a lot more doors open and a lot more opportunities to share the gospel through your music. Uh, Jermaine's got an interesting comment here. He says, metal has some true power in it. Uh, there are a ton of positive statistics with people who listen to it. I feel like Jesus would come back for a for today's show versus an elevation song because he's <laughs> returning to make war. You know, there, there's a time and a season for everything. Um, there, there really is. And that's one of the things that we have to remember when Jesus, Jesus is coming back. He's not coming back as, as the lamb. He's coming back as the lion of the tribe of Judah to right. make war. <laughs> and uh, there's a time and a season for that. And, um, you know, it's not going to be the, the, the fluffy, fluffy, um, um, 
you know, kind of just happy music that he's going to be coming back to. That soundtrack with it would not go good with him coming back on the White Horse <laughs> with all the armies and the host of heaven. And Trey Tate says, let's go Resurrection Records. You know, before we close out tonight, I, I just have to say I really enjoy your music. What you guys is doing are doing are wonderful. Um, thank you so much for being available vessels for the Lord. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to share tonight before we close out? No, just thanks for having us and, and the opportunity to reach reach more people. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Yeah, and I, it's, it's, I think what you just touched on there, uh, being available vessels. Like if you if you want to do something like this and you don't feel good enough, but you feel called, make yourself available because God will God will work through you. Uh, all of everybody you know that's listening has had doubts i'm sure you've had doubts about doing a a live show and you know i've had doubts about singing and it's it's just part of our nature but god will take care of it if you are in it for him yes yes that is so true dale um i have doubts every time before i come on (laughs) i'm not i'm not just making that up out out of false humility Uh, Sometimes I have doubts about the direction that the Lord's leading because a lot of times it's not the way my flesh would go, but it's, it's, it's submitting to him and being available. And it's those times when you have those doubts that you just give it over to God and let him take control. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you can see the power of Holy Spirit really flow through. Morning Doves, thanks for sharing your music with us. Morning Dove, Trey, Maine, Dale, everybody that's been on tonight with us. Wow. Thank you for the conversation. We're going to be back next week at 8 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to we're going to slow it up a little bit. We're going to have my very good friends from many years of doing this. Um, they're singer-songwriters. We're going to have Terry and Diane McCabe on with us. They were on with us, oh, about four years ago. And I love the McCabes, and we're going to talk about Jesus. It is some good singer-songwriter music. So we're going to change up the genre a little bit. And as I said, there's a time and a season for everything. Guys, if you just hold while we close out, I'll be right with you and everybody else. Until next week, thank you for joining us. Have a great weekend. And until next Thursday, peace out and rock on. Lithoscry.com.